now why is this video happening guys hmm. aproko doctor you know him now the man who is on social media on instagram on tiktok whatever platform it is that you you know do social media on who is there telling you to not take soda telling you sister in kechi sister Philomena. you know that man yeah your name is not so bobby fidel is a gamba and his case is one where it seemed like you can do everything right and yet somehow some unfortunate things will still happen to you because that is what has happened to aproko doctor whose real name like i mentioned is non so bobby fidelis again but she non so again but he's a nigerian medical doctor activist and social media personality so what happened to him hmm it has come out to reveal that um all of december of 2022 he was actually fighting for his life you know while advocating for persons to live longer and saying if you want to live longer if you want this and that to happen to you you need to stop doing this you need to stop doing that and answering health questions and you know from people and of people he was actually fighting for his own life and he was in tears and he was crying and he was you know despondent because it's like he was like according to him those period that that period of uh, that period in his life it was like um the tweets that persons you know when it comes out to say oh you you shouldn't do this you don't take soda you don't take energy drinks don't do this and do that no social vices that people indulge in when it says don't do it they're like okay doctor with all of these things you say we shouldn't do if you don't live long ha, that's not going to be funny so he said he got him because he was like look at me him um the complications that can arise from this situation i'm facing could actually lead to my death welcome to gstook tv your home for everything entertainment to bring celebrity lifestyle news um happenings across the world we bring to you social events you know anything anything at all that interests you you're going to find it on this channel just go through our content you will become glued i promise you that so subscribe already and click on the bell button that is what is going to notify you of updates and interesting gist like this one when we have them for your viewing pleasure and i'm this kind of person that i've lived my life you know Healthy. I take salad to the extent that my brother calls me a goat. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't even take soda. I take just water and I take salad. And uh, I'm here suffering from a brain tumor yes while the brain tumor you know was burning it was it wasn't cancerous it was still something that rocked his life basically and he almost lost his eyesight he almost lost his left eye and it, it was really a very traumatic period for him a product doctor shared the news and uh, we told the story like this let me tell you how he told his own story he said that um it was it was at an event where he emceed his a social media personality and you know of all i mean all offline he also has some other gigs aside from being a doctor yeah so he said he was um emceeing an event and then it was feeling some headache he took um an algestic that's maybe a paracetamol or ibuprofen or aspirin whatever it is that he took he took one of those drugs and he realized it wasn't helping and before anyone was happening he wanted to go to the mall the next day he couldn't see from his other eye so he called his ophthalmologist to say that oh he thinks he has glaucoma you know he diagnosed himself and you know in the course of that he did mri and all of those things and the results just came back to say that he is actually i thought they thought it was some brain aneurysm that he maybe like um blood vessels in his brain had actually swollen and blood had gotten there but uh, later i did describe that no it's a tumor and the tumor was in the middle of his head i'm going to spare you all of the medical jargons and all of those things that he said in that video i'm just giving you the summary of everything that average co doctor said happened to him and how his wife was the person carrying him up and down and the importance of having support system i'm going to say that also in the course of this video but let me just continue telling you the story so they thought it was brain aneurysm and they discovered they did some mri tests and all of those things and discovered that oh this is brain tumor and you have to be operated upon and so he had to go and prepare himself for operation all the while you know trying to still keep up with posting on social media having to disappoint some you know some 
brand uh, some brands and you know some other persons praying and waiting for him to feel better and among other things so he said that it was scheduled for the operation and you know he said on the day he was shaking it was you know he really could not believe that they would have to cut his call open because they would they could have gone through his actually he had the surgery in nigeria i'm going to get to that also and why he got the surgery in nigeria but i'm going to tell you about the process first he said that he was supposed to go through his nose but because of the location of the of the tumor it was in his pituitary gland which was also resting on his optical nerve which is like the the things that control his eyesight so you could lose a lot of things if um any mistake happens and it does not go well so they decided that they were going to go through his brain so he has a scar he's going to grow i mean he, he keeps his hair so i want to believe that he's going to also grow this one that he had to shave for the cost for the sake of the surgery uh maybe he would you know um start growing his hair but they had to you know go through his call remove the part of his call to access his brain so they can actually access the tumor and take it out of his system and like i mentioned earlier aproko doctor has said that there is no known cause of this illness it could just happen to anybody for any reason you know anything could happen and that's how it happened to him uh but he also mentioned that he's grateful for his support system having his wife beside him people who you know, he even mentioned a certain lady who was in Port Harcourt and was rallying, you know, every other contract she has in Nigeria, in Lagos, Nigeria, rallying them so they can attend to Apropo Doctor in time. So I want to say, I said I was going to talk about him doing the surgery here in Nigeria. It was something that we, we, we hear commonly. People saying they will have brain issues and then the next thing you know, they are seeking for funds to be able to leave the country to, you know, treat the whole situation and be better. But for Apropo Doctor, he said he came from a place of, you know, um, trust and belief in the system and the doctor is handling his case because there are persons that he actually trusts and respects in the industry and he knows that they won't do him bad, which is why he decided to, you know, have a surgery in Nigeria, not necessarily because of finance, but because he really... Some of us followed you from Twitter to Instagram <laughs> and um, now we're getting to meet you, but... We're going to have a conversation with you, a rich okay. conversation about something trending because we okay. know you're very opinionated. But we'll first start with a little bit about you. The curious thing about me is why did you, how did you become a Proko doctor? What, what was that about? Long story, but I'll make it short. Mm -hmm. So in um, 400 level, when I was in school, came across this old man who had a stroke. And, you know, we got to the doctor and the doctor said, these are the things you need to do to prevent the ne a next stroke from happening. And spent almost an hour. Fortunately, I was heading to my final year and prepared for exams. And I got back to the ward, and here was the same man with another stroke. Wow. And this time, he didn't make it. Oh. And so it got me thinking, is it that this man did not understand what the doctor what said? said. Mm. And over time, I began to realize that a lot of people are not well informed about their health. Yes. Mm. And so how can I help pass across this message? And so I decided to audition for a radio, and they said I was not good enough. Yeah. Old, you know, we'll come back to that conversation yeah. later. Mm. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I would not. <laughs> so, uh, you know, um, got there and decided to use the only tool I had in my hand, which was social media. So I started from tweets and after a while I decided to make videos. But we try to do it in such a way that it's easier for you to share because people don't come across, people don't start looking for health information until mm. they need it. Mm. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's already too late. So we decided to go before they need it. So Amazing. I know many of my wonderful ladies, um, <laughs> we, we've all at some point, all of us have encountered your videos. So I know Nima, Nima has been... On Twitter. <laughs> so I initially started sharing some of your tweets. They were very informative and I'll be like, I, I didn't think to write this now, I just know this thing. Mm. So share, it's easier. And then I saw that they banned Twitter. I didn't even know where you were. Suddenly I saw one video popped up. Ah, the guy there again. Oh, I'm following him. <laughs> I'm following you back to back. So I must say thank you. For making mm -hmm. education so interesting. Yes. Because everything you do is serious. Mm. It's just funny. Yeah. The way you do it. So I live with the message and I'm still laughing. And um, sometimes I disagree. Mm. Or recently I had one thing I had to disagree on. I'm not going to elaborate because it's very personal. But do you have that kind of attack where people think, ah, wait till they do this one, I'll let you know everything. Mm. Or, you know, where people think they know better and they come... How, and how do you handle that? Let me just add to that, because so that we don't make it too long, <laughs> which is sometimes in keeping it short and funny, do we lose some of the important details? 
Okay, I think I would, I would answer yes first. So definitely, people have certain beliefs, right? And a lot of what I say is backed by science and research. And one thing with science and research is it leaves out the anecdotal evidence. So anecdotal evidence is basically it happened to me or it happened to someone I know. Mm -hmm. But it's not backed. So you can't say it's replicable in other people. Mm. The reason we take paracetamol for headache is because if one person takes it, and you give it to 10 or 15 other people, there is a chance that at least 90% of those people will get cured. Yeah. Mm. That's why we prescribe it. If it only works for one person, we cannot prescribe it as a common cure mm. for everyone. We yeah. So we try as much as we can to, I try as much as I can to keep mm -hmm. the information at such a level where it's replicable across board. So if you have it, it's going to work for you, right? Um, the thing about ensuring that Capture, yeah. short, simple, and all that. That's why we try to pick very general topics. Uh -huh. So if there are people who have been coming to my comment section and they're like, um, but we want to talk about this. You haven't said anything about this. You haven't said anything about this. We're working on a longer YouTube show mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. we can actually sit down and dissect it down. issues. Mm -hmm. We'll still be funny, sure. Uh, <laughs> it might not. <laughs> you get, but you know, uh, just in such a way that people can easily understand. So mm. these ones are for people who are specific. Mm. So there is that thing. So what we now try to do is, you know, we have a part one, a part two, a part three. So okay. when people follow up, yeah, they can understand. Yeah. Amazing. So I watch your videos and when I get the information, I'm laughing, but it's making sense to me. There was one you did about uh, using salt to fry plantain. I enjoy, like, when you fry plantain without salt, I feel like you don't know how to cook. And I saw it in the video, like, Omo, you're killing yourself. It was shocking to me. I got the information, and at the same time, it was funny. Now, um, how have you been able to, how will I put it now? So there are different markets, and I'm realizing that most young people don't have that long attention span. Do you think this market is catering for those of them who don't have that time to sit and pay attention to what is going to be helpful? Yes. Um... I think that's, that's exactly the people I'm trying to reach, mm. yeah. right? The people who don't have time to go through a research paper and, you know, read everything. Oh, they get it in, you get, you know, they, <laughs> they get it in that story format. <clears throat> now, the reason we tell stories, stories have always been one way we pass across information, right? Um, if I ask you what you ate three weeks ago, you probably won't remember. Mm -hmm. But that video is more than two months old. Yeah. <laughs> and, that's, and that's because, you know, it's a story... It excited certain emotions in you, and you're mm. able to remember it. Mm. That way, you can pass it along to other people. Let me throw you this question about, you know, the way we are. Yeah. I've gone to school seven years. That's if you went to a private university. Mm. If you calculate Nigerian ASU okay. issues, you probably would have done more than that. Or oh, let's even say you did seven years. Okay, you did seven years. I did but eight. You did eight years. <laughs> you're not shooting video. I but please. Daddy and Explain mommy. To us. No. <laughs> Even just from the personal point of view to your parents, to you just people in the beginning before the, you blow. Well, technically you are blown, you have endorsement. But how was it? Okay, so you will answer that question after we go on a break. They said we should go on a break. Oh my goodness. You guys should wait and let's answer that question. Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're still talking to the Aproko doctor and I asked, you studied medicine eight years in school and you are now a social media digital content creator. How did that make your parents feel? Mixed feelings. So uh, when I decided to go into this, when I decided to give it more attention, my parents didn't know. So because I needed to prove something. I wasn't necessarily doing it for the money mm -hmm. initially. I was doing it because I could see that what I was doing was actually solving a much needed problem. Good. I just did not know how to approach it professionally. So I was basically just telling stories, but with, it's, you know how we used to grow up and they would put paracetamol inside a bath mm. and then wrap it. <laughs> so it was the, a bath as a story and mm. then the actual message is inside. Mm. And it was hard initially because fellow doctors mm. were saying, I was wasting my time, you know. If you if you were on Twitter, then you, that that was, you know, you're wasting your time. 
you are you're you're just a social media person. Mm. I can't believe somebody who is a doctor is mm. you know wasting mm. time just yes. tweeting. Mm -hmm. But there really is an entire group of people that are unreached. Mm -hmm. They have no idea. Mm. They're looking for yeah. someone to trust mm. that they can listen to. And one of the reasons why you know this seems to work is because I don't. You hardly see me in any video wearing a tie, with a lab <laughs> coat and mm. all that. I come off as your guy guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the person you can talk to. Mm. Right? You can trust. Yes, that's the person you can trust. You know what you're doing? What you're doing is, I find that many people, they would rather call a friend as a doctor to sort their issues out than go to the hospital. Because the moment you enter that hospital, your problem is bigger than it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, oh my God, they are going to, first of all, take me through um, the first test, test and then <laughs> tell me something. Before. If I can call my guy that is the doctor, you'll be like, oh, don't worry, it's just malaria or something. Or, you know, or, or tell you yeah. to go and see a doctor if you have tried it, you know, if, for a few days. So I like that you do that. And my question is, there's this program, it's American, it's called The Doctors. And I've always wondered if we could replicate it here in Nigeria and if people would, would you know, would find Connect. it as interesting as a lot of people. But I think your way is much more, um, will be better for us than that because your way is indigenous to us. That yes. is how we like to hear our stories. Yes. That way. So you're doing amazing and people are are learning a different way now. So the doctors that are in the hospitals, they know now, all of us, we are on Google now. So when we go to visit a doctor, <laughs> if he says we have this, we say yes, because I saw the symptoms on Google. <laughs> so, you know, I had one doctor ask me, please, are you a nurse? I said, no, I'm just a Google doctor. <laughs> but, you know, so I just want to say, um, having done this, does this mean that your real doctor practice is on hold? Or mm, this is just... That was another mm. very good question. So um, I still practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do you find time to? Mm -hmm. Um, so I've moved into telemedicine now. Oh, okay. So okay. reaching out to patients online. Okay. And sometimes I have private patients that, you know, okay. that I go to visit. But what I'm trying to focus in currently is on public health. Okay. And we, we Nigerians still assume that people who study public health are not real doctors. If you're not mm. in a hospital, you're not mm. a doctor at all. <laughs> but <laughs> you get your vaccines because they are public, public health, health professionals, yeah. right? So... That is another aspect, and also trying to fuse the world of media and medicine together. You know, things like MCT sugar. Yes. Talked a lot about sexual health and reproduction. Yes, and it was done as a... And it was done as an everyday thing. Yes. yes. So that's what we are trying to replicate, to be able to reach a lot more people. Amazing job you're doing. But I know that for you to be effective in this approco you are doing. You must have been a gossip <laughs> as a child. You are the yes, one that used to report. Don't choke. Calm down. <laughs> I used to report to the parents what everybody is doing in the house. So you are going to tell us a bit of that story. But how are you able to navigate your massive followers? Uh, are those followers just about, you know, enriching? Or do you, in the midst of your followers, still have people who are constantly antagonizing what you do? Yes. So, um... Trolls. I love... Conversations. I love when I'm challenged. I love when the challenge comes with knowledge. Because that's the way I was trained. If mm. you tell me what I said is wrong, tell me why, why? it's wrong. Mm. Don't just tell me you're wasting your time. You're this, you're that. If you come off insulting, I assume you don't have any knowledge. And I have zero tolerance to trolls. So you block. Immediately. See, mm. my peace of mind. Mm. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> I block and keep it moving. Right? But there are people who have had conversations. And in the process of conversing with those people, I get a perspective that I was not seen before. Mm -hmm. So you're open. So I'm able to learn from their own experience. And it superior helps me. Argument. Superior arguments, personal experiences. Mm -hmm. Because it helps me, okay, probably the next time I'm doing this, mm -hmm. I need to you put in that, that sect of people mm -hmm. together. Uh, it, were you gossiping when you were? Yeah, was I gossiping as a child? I was the firstborn, okay. so naturally, now we they always, you know, mm. tell mom see what's in the happen. Really? Right? <laughs> That's <laughs> what. <Really> blood. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I think in person, I'm, I'm actually a quiet, reserved person. I'm the person who would, would you invite to a party and I'll just sit in one corner with... I watch everybody. It's your cup. Cup is not that hot. I watch everybody. It's the red cup. cup. It's not the red cup. It's not the red cup. <laughs> And then go and mimic each and every person. So that quiet person who's watching everybody knows how this one drinks, how this one eats, yeah. how this true, one speaks. True, true, and then true. this just explains 
the grandpa look, young boy look, <laughs> and all of that. I really love all the personalities. But my, my concern is, come, is it about the money? Because now it seems to me, medicine is also very lucrative than media and than social media. And now you're endorsed. Because I heard that one on Jingle the Voice. <laughs> I said, ah, this guy has got an endorsement. So you're maximizing every, every area. Mm. How lucrative and, you know, has it become? Has it been? Mm. If, it were, if it were for the money, mm. I would be in UK right now. Did you see that was my next question? And in, in pounds, then. No one is threatening us. We just gave you a fact. You can save the suffer inflation. Yeah, yeah. yeah but I'm still, but still, but still I, can be, I can be sending the money down here so that I'll be building like one or two houses. So initially, it was not for the money. Mm -hmm. Now, even right now, with the massive number of followers, you know, millions of people everywhere, it's still not about the money. Because if it were about the money, I would be endorsing every and anything. Mm. Ah, yes, okay. yes. I've had endorsement I've had to turn down mm -hmm. from best companies. Mm. I'm even saying it on live TV. I would so never... Let's be on let's <laughs> I would never accept an endorsement. Thank you. From, okay. And it's personal. Mm. Right? Principles. If you do not have a product that actively helps the life of the consumers, whether oh, or not you're making you. money from it, I would not endorse you. Thank you. I follow you. So I follow you for life. For this one, you know, I told yeah. you, I'll just determine whether I'm following you. <laughs> so follow, follow, follow. All right. So uh, my question is, um, our young people, so you talk a lot about sexual health, and that's important, but there's this thing that is just a scourge right now, and that is drug abuse, drug mm. use and drug abuse. Mm. I just need... I hope eventually there will be a partnership between you and NDLA, but could we see more of your opinions on this substance? Because mm -hmm. a lot of people who are doing it, it really comes from a place of wanting to be glamorous, wanting to be in and cool. And hip. I feel they would listen to someone like you who's just like them and cool and everything. Hip and cool too. Is this something you're looking to, or is this one of those extended topics you'd rather deal with? No, we, we would, um, so aside from just me sitting in front of the camera, mm -hmm. Another type of content we try to push out are short skits, mm -hmm. you know, acting mm. and all that. I think that's, that's, that's where I try to display some of my acting skills. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, acting and because these young people also watch other people who are content creators mm -hmm. on social media. Yeah. And then they see them glamorizing drugs. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if, it's, if, if someone is not telling you you know, how much this particular blue is making their mind. You, you, you could, you see it all the time. Yeah. And so for us to be able to counter that, it has to be deliberate, it has to be sustained. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And health is general. Mm -hmm. So from time to time, we talk about it. Yeah, I know. But for some reason, when you talk about it, some people feel you're attacking them. Mm. Mm. So, Very personal. Yeah, so we, we get that kind of pushback a bit. But it's not. But we understand what we're doing, and then you know we look for another way to make the the ever sweet, so mm. that the drug would you know go in there. Mm. And work. So before Elo now started to feature with you, would hear Nkechi Filomena. Those names, your friends. <laughs> Why these not people? In trouble. <laughs> uh, who are these names? Who are these people? And Oak is not one of your friends. <laughs> <laughs> fortunate to be <laughs> your your <Chef> character. <laughs> who are these people? So, um, Funny enough, in Kechi, Emeka, actually people I know every day. <laughs> <laughs> like, Poor guys. So, so they see me yeah. and they're like, you don't know whether to be angry or mad. Or that, <laughs> <laughs> that the has blown. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, Pius and Philomena, you know, completely made of people. But uh, for people who ask me, sometimes I tell them, ah, in Kechi broke my heart. Emeka stole her from me. Yeah. Pius was the person that orchestrated the whole thing, yeah. you know, yeah. and... But these are people that, they are everyday people. Mm -hmm. People have come to accept those names. Mm. It's, if I don't mention Nkechi now in a video, somebody will say, why didn't you mm. talk why about Nkechi today? Yeah, today. today. Yeah, where she go? But these are still part of the uh, you know, ways we try to make it. But because of the way you put these names out, uh, your new friends are afraid to tell you stuff because they're afraid that you may use their names <laughs> to so, make an example <laughs> of one of your skits. You know, so before, before I'm a content creator, mm -hmm. I'm a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, certain things are sacred. Good. Confidential. Uh, I am, I am, I'm not the person who would use your condition mm -hmm. for clout. Mm -hmm. But if your condition can help another person, mm -hmm. I try as much as I can to protect you. 
Thank while you. sharing the story. Yes, while share. sharing the story. So Very we can important. still share the story, but that person is still protected. Let, let, let me ask you about production. People, somebody will see you now, and because I deal with a lot of young people, they will see you now and they want to do you now. Immediately. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us how you started shooting? You know, what was the kind of phone you were using? Like, I want you to break it down. I like what was the phone you were using? Already. What phone did you use when you started tweeting? How was the Before setup you when you started? And how has, how, how has that journey been growing? So, um, I was working three jobs hmm. in Lagos. I was working in Ianisolo, I was working in Festac, and I was working in VI. Wow. At the hmm. same time. So, eight to four, Ianisolo. Hmm. Four to eight, first stack, weekends, VI. I had a phone I was using then, right? And I would set up the phone whenever I could find time mm. in my office and talk health education. I can't, say, I can't look for those videos because I think I was too ashamed to share them, but I would look for them because I think my wife has them. I would look for them and share them. And there were a few lessons I learned from that video. Was that I was trying wait, to... Wait, rewind. Yeah, no, no, wait. Yes. Oh, yes, finish. I am. We held out to that. Finger. Oh, oh yeah, we cut it. It's about our hands. <laughs> Let it continue. Yeah, keep it Let it finish. finish. It is. Okay. Yeah, so um, I, would, I would share... So, yeah. So I would, I would try... I was mimicking the white man. Mm. So mm. I would sit down in front of my office and I'm like, today I want to talk to you about... <laughs> I, want to, I want to talk to you about... Polycystic ovarian syndrome. You see, polycystic ovarian, <laughs> and nobody was paying attention. <laughs> I told you. I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> that kind of the way we nobody like this was paying attention children. because the bulk of the people mm -hmm. who were who the content was supposed to be for mm -hmm. do not speak like that. They're indigenous mm -hmm. people, and I, I think that here like that. Who yeah, and <laughs> and I think that that's one of the reasons a lot of content creators face because they try to quote this unquote appeal to. The international audience, but you're not creating content for them. Mm -hmm. You're creating content for the Nigerians. That's amazing. Yeah. The people I'm, who are I'm out going there. to stop you there. <laughs> the and we're going to still continue this conversation. Let's take a quick break. Let me, I want you to take that <laughs> we in. We don't want to take a break. Yes, we'll take a break. When we come <laughs> back, we'll dig further into this being owning your story and being indigenous, being true to who you are. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still with Aproko Doctor. He's actually Doctor Ejemba, but this is how you know him. And <laughs> you're giving us the backstory of how you started. And I love the fact that you said you also wanted to sound like them yeah. until you came back and sounded like us. <laughs> so I was using a small phone mm. to make the video. Videos were not clear, mm -hmm. right? And I moved to Twitter, you know, trying to make this post. But one thing was I was consistent. This has been on since 2015. Yes. Wow. We're in 2022, and that's seven years of consistency. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. That's a good the one. problem mm -hmm. is a lot of young people want fast, fast. the glam, they want the recognition, they want it now. now. Mm. Mm. And if they don't get in now, they are frustrated. Mm. Mm. And they think, ah, this is not for me, I just move on to something okay. else. But there's something called grit. There's something called staying power. Mm. Because it's in the process of... There are some people that come to my page or they're just hearing about me for the first time. And before you know what's happening, they've watched 70 or 80 videos. Mm -hmm. At, At a go. At a go. And that's because you have enough content. Mm. But if you, if you don't have that staying power, you keep trying your hands at different things mm. because... You want to blow in one year. No, life does not work that way. Oh, wow. Just because wow, wow. it has been glamorized on social media, mm. now people see this. They don't see the backstory. Yes. Mm. They don't see the trials that come with it. They don't see the rejections that happen. Mm. I have people tell me, even, even till now, on my way here, I was hearing a story about someone who was supposedly, supposedly high placed in society mm -hmm. who went about, you know, saying, yeah, this person wastes his time. So show me that this person is not doing a serious job. Mm -hmm. But Till now. But I would have felt bad, but I was like, mm, I've partnered with CDC. Mm. I've partnered with the World Health, the World Health Organization. Mm. I've partnered with IPPFA Africa. Mm. I've partnered with, name it. And yet you're not serious. And yet I'm not serious. Mm. The, 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 the lives you are saving. <laughs> the the <laughs> lives you are saving with your content. You get. You can't even number it. You get. But you're a doctor, you're not wearing lab coats. How can you be serious? <laughs> so, um, mm -hmm. young people out there, you know, those watching the shows, I think I should talk directly to you. Mm. Mm. 
Good things take time. Mm. Thank you. And you need to believe strongly in what you're doing mm -hmm. and give it time to grow. Mm. It's always so, about uh, money. You know, um, mm. talking about being indigenous, I'm just beginning to realize that the stories we're told growing up is beginning to change. We're told that you have to speak a certain way, act a certain way. This one was giving me just of etiquette class, how you eat a certain way. And I said, it's not for me. The life I'm living right now, down. I will not do that. I will eat the way I want to eat. And it, it formed the better part of our lives. But now people are seeing that even the people you are trying to etiquette for, are coming here for the originality that you have. Mm -hmm. I've heard how they, you know, give movies on Netflix and everything. Mm -hmm. They want to partner with people who give them indigenous stories. Yeah. There are a lot of movies on Netflix that are in their local languages. They just have the subtitle mm -hmm. because they are going indigenous. How do you advise someone who, maybe a young person, who is looking to do skits and everything on how to find something that you're good at in your own um, would I say language now, yeah. or your own locality, and harness it? Instead of trying to be a certain way, act a certain way, speak a certain way, have a certain accent. You get, yeah. That. So when we're growing up, the popular songs were important songs. Mm. Yeah. Now, we have people like CK. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. With his songs worldwide. Mm -hmm. We have Burner Boy, we have the rest of them. And Afrobeats is beginning to take center stage in the world. You have three-star, four-star hotels playing Afrobeats in their lobby. Yes. It yes. never used to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's only proof that if you own yourself, other people would accept Just. you. Mm. Mm. Own yourself. You, get, you need to own yourself. You need to be proud of your story. Sometimes when I tell people my story, initially people think, ah, this one went, went to school abroad, you know, did one or two things. My name when I was in school was actually Bobby because I never behaved like the actual person. I grew up in Sri Lanka, Aguda. Hmm. For real? Yes, Lilia. I sold pap and nogi. Is it loud? I'm serious. Please tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> I sold pap and nogi by the roadside. Wow. Hmm. The reason I love books so much was because that was, I could only sit by the junction doing nothing. Mm. And so books were my escape from mm. that place. Mm. Right? So tell your story. Own it. There mm. are people out there who are looking for stories. Yeah. And if you can tell your story, but the, but the most important thing is you need to be sure that there are people who can resonate and relate with that story. Mm. Because it's only when people find relate to it. Yes. So if you find your tribe and, you know, talk to your tribe, People now start hustling to be part of that tribe. On a normal day on Instagram, I don't sound this way. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> I don't sound this way. Mm. If you listen to me on Instagram, the first thing that occurs to you is this guy doesn't know how to speak English. Mm. Because sometimes I jump talk mm -hmm. mm. some things. But it's deliberate. <laughs> it has to break through the line. Yes. Finding your tribe. Because that is my tribe. That's the people I'm trying to reach. Mayam is going to throw in a question. <laughs> yes, I just would like again for us to talk about some of the issues that you, you know, that you talk about. What would you say is something that is serious that Nigerians need to pay attention to health-wise, health medical-wise? What is it that is so serious you wish Nigerians were more aware of it and did better? Mm. Mental health. Yes, yeah. mental health. Yes. Mental mm. health. And that's one of the reasons why we've not really given it so much, um, I don't want to say attention, but we've not given it so much spotlight yet. Okay. Please, the word is yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the reason being, that style of content may not be well suited for mental health topics. Mm. Oh. Because it may look like you're trying to... Even, mock. It, yes. It, it may look like you're trying to mock the mental story. health issues. Mm. So that, the long YouTube format is well suited for it. Well, and okay. it's, we, we are already producing it. Mm -hmm. Because the idea is we're going to speak or we're going to hear from people from their own point of view. Mm -hmm. So, in doing that, we help create a community of people who live with the same condition. Mm -hmm. We're able to break the stigma. Mm -hmm. And that way, you know, people start talking about it. Because I feel that mental health is ignored. In Complete. lots. There's a lot of stigma. You know, there's a lot of stigma associated with it. We just assume, once I say I have a mental health problem, I just want to decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but... Ah. Mm -hmm. But this person is just lazy. Mm -hmm. Recently, they talked about... Uh, uh, 
very popular actress who they said she had a mental breakdown. Mm -hmm. She got mad. Nigerians went with it. You need to mm -hmm. see the comments. Mm -hmm. They went with it. So if somebody else has, go be at your risk Hiding. to declare. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's better to share. I wanted to build on this that you are doing and see how much you partner certain other charities, for instance. You have a huge platform. And so you have other causes that other people do. Would you support a friend who has a cause that, you know, you think, let me use my platform to help? Did you do that? I'm yeah, not your friend. Sure. So for non-governmental organizations or non-profits, mm -hmm. it is also important that you're solving an actual problem. Mm. Mm. Yeah. For me. And sometimes I think it helps if I'm able to, I don't want to say connect, or, you know, if I'm able to em em empathize with what you're mm -hmm. going through. For example, I've been to the Dorian Germanzi Foundation, and what she does is help people who are victims of gender-based gender abuse. Gender abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, people who have, you know, probably gotten pregnant by their fathers. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's Deep. when I listened to their stories. You connected. I was, I was mad, angry, sad. I know. I, there oh, was just this wave of emotions going up in me. I was looking for somebody to beat, but at the same time, I was like, you're not a violent person. Mm. It, it, was, it, it was just so much. Now, partnering with that kind of organization, for me, is a yes. Mm. Mm. I'm going to help push the stories, right? If you're trying to help, you know, um, um, cervical health, you know, probably, um, probably 